grace and peace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua the Messiah, to the elect across the earth. We love y'all so much. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, welcome back to the dinner table. Very excited to have you here so we can enjoy this amazing meal together. Um, I must tell you, this is a two-part series, okay? There's two parts to this message. Uh, the first half is much shorter. Uh, that's what you're going to get now. And then by the grace of God, following after this, not too long after this, you're going to get part two. Part two goes to a whole new level. So I, I hope you got your pen. I hope you got, you got a notepad and, of course, your Bible. Because this is not just a dinner table. This is a classroom. Amen. And we're all going to learn together by the great teacher, the Holy Spirit. And some of y'all might be new to the channel. And you're like, man, what's this brother talking about? A dinner table and welcome back. Let's eat. Jesus Christ is not just the King of Kings. He's not just the Lord of Lords as he has many titles. But he's the chef. Of all chefs, can I get an amen? You see it now? He's the king of the kitchen. So I'm I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm going to serve you the meal like a waiter. You know what I mean? I'm going to give you your meal that's been cooked up by Jesus Christ. Because that's how much he loves you. He's There's no cooking like Jesus cooking. You know what I'm saying? He makes a hearty home-cooked meal with the proper nutrition and vitamins and minerals that he knows that you need because you are his child. Amen. You know, I'm talking to the elect. So with that being said, I don't want to waste time. We got to get right into this. God has put this heavy on my heart. Got a couple of quick announcements. But other than that, let's at least first pray and get washed. Okay, we're going to clean our hands so we can enjoy this meal together. Say this with me, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in your holy blood. Help me to receive your word and walk in it and stop and bind and break all powers of darkness and forces of evil that would try to hinder me in any way. I love you, Lord, and I give you all the glory. In Jesus Christ's name, I receive now the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. And Lord, guide me. I give you the glory. All glory in Jesus' mighty name. So, it's been a while, okay? Uh, there's been so much going on. Saints, as we're getting closer and closer to the return of Christ, and you got to remember, before the return of our great Messiah... It has to be the rise of the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, tribulation. There's so much upon us right now that there's been a higher demand of people in need ministry-wise. So don't be offended if you haven't got an email back or you might have got an email back, but, uh, you know, the enemy blocked it. You know, Google, uh, YouTube, they're doing a lot of weird things now. Even, I'm sure you know, you could text somebody and they'll tell you, I never got your text message. So the enemy is trying to sow discord and cause people to be offended with, uh, you know, in the midst of the saints. So never assume that you're being rejected by us or anyone else. Always try to be positive of the matter, okay? We have a lot of people that we have to go based upon the severity of the issue. So we have people that are suicidal, people that are... Their house is falling apart. They're going to, they're about to get divorced. Uh, someone's dying in the hospital. We got to go deal with that first before we deal with someone who may not have a, as of a severe need to, to reach out. So um, if you have not gotten your partner email yet, you'll be getting it soon. We've redone and we're in the process of redoing the website to where you can go in and just log in and watch the messages that we upload onto the actual website. As a lot of y'all know, at some point, okay, you could clearly see that YouTube and Google and all of these things, eventually it might get to the point, God forbid, but let's be honest, that the only way for you to get these messages and continue to get fed is to go to directly to revelationsofjesuschrist.com. Go directly to the website. You'll be able to log in through the partner's access and get the exclusive messages. 
And for anyone else, you don't have to be a partner in the ministry. We'll still upload our public messages as well. But the exclusive messages are for those who take their walk with Christ very serious. They love the Lord. They're trying to live right. They're not playing games with the Lord. Jesus says, don't give your jewels to the swine. That means that not every message is for everybody. And it's not based upon your financial status. Um, You could be from a third world country, struggling. If you love the Lord and you want to be a part of this ministry, go to the website. But just be patient as we get back to you, okay? We love every single one of y'all, okay? The number one thing we're concerned with as far as the gathering of the elect is that we gather together in one accord. We're not necessarily looking for numbers. Although we want to reach the four ends of the earth with the true gospel, we want we want saints of God that are sincere, okay? Sincerely loving the Lord and willing to love one another. Digital persecution is happening. So we want to make sure that y'all are still being fed, even if YouTube, God forbid, you know, but if YouTube does some crazy stuff and really starts knocking down the true ministries off of YouTube, and at least you can go to the website and still get the uploaded messages Okay, so uh, the next one for y'all brothers and sisters that are actually in the ministry is going to be the mysteries of Paul. One of my favorite messages of all time. Um, It should be done soon and you'll be able to watch that. You can log right into the website, enter in through and you'll be able to watch that and all the other videos. With that being said, let's go. We got to get into this life changing message. Exposing Satanic Seasons. This first part I call the intro because the second part that I'm going to have to do in another video in a day or two um, is way deep, super deep, and it's amazing, uh, life-changing, encouraging. But this first introduction, part one, I need you to see something that The devil don't want you to know, and I'm very grateful that God has really put this on my heart to give you this message. Uh, So are you excited? I know I'm excited. You know, we've done a lot of documentaries lately, saying we haven't had a chance to really do dinner table messages and stuff like that, and and we've missed that. So I'm grateful for your patience, okay? And uh, documentaries are huge. They're very important to expose darkness. But this right here, this is home. This is home for us. You know, these home-cooked meals, exploring the word, the mysteries. You know what I mean? We try to balance it. You know that. You know that, saints. So, let's go ahead. Are y'all ready? Exposing Satanic Seasons. Now, I preached a message that the mighty king of the kitchen told me to serve y'all some years back and it was I believe it was called spiritual seasons or the four spiritual seasons or something like that you can look it up maybe I'll put the link in the description box now it you can say it's a cousin to this message but they're not the same Um, that one is amazing message you need to watch it glory be to Christ but this one this one is something it's a strategy and a pattern now There's the biblical definition of pattern, and that's what we're going to talk about in part two of this series. So today we're talking about exposing satanic seasons and patterns according to the English definition of a pattern. But on the part two, we're going to talk about heavenly patterns on two different uh, angles. We're going to talk about the heavenly patterns of the Most High Christ, and we're going to also expose the satanic heavenly patterns. Now, if you, some of y'all don't know, there's different levels to heaven. And the enemy, the principalities, there's a certain realm in the heavens that they reside. See, you trying to get me to talk about part two. I see you. You better chill out, okay? I'm getting too deep with it. That's for the part two video. Let's go back to this, man. Some of y'all think you slick. <laughs> but listen, love you. I'm excited. Satanic seasons. A lot of y'all go through so much because you're not paying attention to the seasons of the devil and the patterns that he operates out of. Now he can and his kingdom can switch up 
But they like operating in patterns. A lot of y'all just didn't know that. Now, there's a lot of scriptures on seasons and things like that. But like I said, the first video, this first part to this two-part series, I don't expect it to be more than an hour long. Okay? Sometimes I say that and it ends up being three hours. But I'm being a hundred with you. I think the second part is going to be the more meaty. You're going to have to put time aside and watch it in increments. It's probably going to be a two-hour message more than likely, Lord willing. So what do I mean, though? If we could sum it up to maybe go through like five scriptures about seasons, right? I want you to get your word, okay? And let's start off in 1 Thessalonians with me. Come on. All glory to Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at this now. Look at this. Chapter 5 verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you don't need that I write to you. So what he's saying is, see, they knew this revelation. They understood spiritual seasons. Like I said, that original message, you definitely want to watch, okay? Because it's going to complement this one. But this is not the same message, all right? But you have to know that there's many types of seasons, okay? There are seasons that God will interact with you. There are spiritual seasons just like there's natural seasons, right? Where... You know, you got winter, spring, summer, and fall. And I want to get deep into that because, like I said, there's a lot of that is on the original message that I preach. But, you know, Ecclesiastes says there's times and seasons, right? If you just real quick, just like I said, I don't expect this one to be too long, long enough for you to, once you catch it, it's going to be a wrap. Sister, brother, once you catch this revelation and you, you see the tactic of the enemy, you're going to be so thankful. And remember that your gratitude determines your latitude. The best thing I tell you is just be grateful for the meals that you get because that makes God the Father want to give you more. Amen. So Ecclesiastes, come on, let's go. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. All right. It says here to everything, verse one, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. See that? So we don't have to go all super deep with it. I think you're starting to get the point. But let's go to Second Timothy. Like I said, I'll do about five just because I want to bring it all together. This one is, maybe this would be like a quick sandwich, you know what I mean? A little tomato soup and grilled cheese, something quick, you know, not no elaborate, big five-course meal. Just enough to get your belly full and get you off running, you know what I mean? So, let's go to 2 Timothy now. I want to show y'all something. This is, a, this is a game changer right here. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 going down. It says, preach the word, be instant in season. And out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You see this? Wow. This lets you know there's certain there's a season, and then there's what they call out of season, but you always got to be ready. But what are some seasons that a lot of people don't talk about, they don't discuss? Well, if you look at patterns, now the biblical definition of pattern is something we're not going to talk about today. We're going to talk about that in the part two, Lord willing, of this video. The pattern I want to talk about is more like the, the English definition of a like a repeated decorative design or something that has a certain pattern to it. Like, you know, um, like if I had a shirt, like a certain plaid shirt, and it, it had five colors, but the pattern was like, you know, green, yellow, navy, blue, white. Green, yellow, navy, blue, white. And there's a certain pattern that repeats. What a lot of y'all don't know is that the devil has set up 
pattern attacks. Write that word there. That's a good key word to write down. Pattern attacks. And these are patterns that he has set up against your walk with Christ, against your marriage. Uh, You ever notice that you'll go through a season where you feel like you're in the victory, right? And then all of a sudden, you just get attacked with crazy lust to the point where sometimes in the past, God have mercy, God forbid, but... You know, in the past, you slipped up and masturbated or whatever the case be. You and you like, what happened? Sister, right? Come on, keep it real. Ah, Brother, sister, don't we keep it real at this dinner table? Uh, Do we need the fist bump? Because I feel like we need a fist bump situation right about. Come on. Come on. You got a fist bump with me. Come on, we laid back here. If we going to be family at the dinner table, I don't want no pretend characters. Or you acting all bashful and shy. Like, eat up. You know, let's enjoy this meal. If you got to burp, burp. You know, if you got to do the walk away, let's do the walk away. Let's get excited together. But keep it real with me. Have you ever been there, sister? Brother, have you ever been there? Well, you're doing good. But all of a sudden, it it feel like you lost all power and strength to fight temptation. And you're just like, yo, what just happened? Like, legit. I mean, have you ever had joy, sister? Like, you in it. You just, uh, And all of a sudden, one week it hits you. And it feels like you overcoming, like, heaviness. You, You don't feel like praising. You're like, what is going on? These are satanic patterns. These are a repeated series of events that you haven't caught on to yet. Wow. Wow. Let's just do it. There's no other way to do it. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. This is going to be Matthew 12, verse, we're going to, I want to say 43. Yes, it says, and when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man or a woman, right? It says, he walked through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he finds it empty and swept in Garnish. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits, demons, right? More wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So I want you to imagine this demon gets casted out of a man or a woman. A demon leaves. You know, my mom's. She passed away, you know, a while ago. But my mother, she, you know, she struggled. She was in and out of relationships, married multiple times. Almost like the woman at the well, you know. And, you know, I would remember, like, certain boyfriends. When I was young, I'm sure some of y'all came out of broken homes. But we came out of a broken home into the arms of a God who loved us so much. He was broken on the cross to make us Whole can I get a name, man? See, my wife and I don't sugarcoat, don't hide, don't beat around bushes. We don't try to look like we was born perfect and uh, laid in a manger next to Jesus. Nope. We came, you know, me, I came from a broken home. You know what I mean? I had uh, older brothers and sisters, uh, some hooked on crack, some alcoholics, some... You know what I mean? Going through it. My mother struggled. She smoked. She had an alcoholic problem for a long time in her life. She struggled with depression uh, from being uh, rejected by men, you know, in and out of relationships. And, uh, you know, that I, I was able to learn a lot from, from, you know, my childhood. And But I'm grateful because it helped me. To become who Christ is forming me to be. 
So never be ashamed of how you were raised up because the dirtier lifestyle you were in, the more glory you give the blood of the lamb. We, we ain't going to talk. We're going to leave that alone. <laughs> That's a beautiful message. But I remember seeing her kick men out, you know, men that would promise her the world, you know what I mean? But they just leech off of her, be drinking, getting drunk. They'd be fighting. I'd hear them fighting. And the man would leave the house. But just like clockwork, he'd be back in about five, six days, knocking on the door sober. Yeah, come on, baby, give me another chance, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll get a job. I'll stop drinking. And then what will happen is my mother welcome him back in. A week or two later, everything's good for like a week or two. And then he'd be drunk again. They'd be fighting again. She'd kick him out again. He'd be gone for another five, seven days. See that pattern? He left, but he came back. These demons, when they're casted out of you, they leave, but they want to come back. And you got to pick up the strategy the patterns and the seasons. If you don't know that, if you don't understand this principle, you're not going to be able to get ahead of your enemy. And that's what it is. You want to be ahead of the enemy. And you can do that by residing in Christ. He's the, he's the secret place. The Holy Ghost is the secret place. It's not just a closet. You got to be praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, you enjoying this? I'm, this is really such an excellent meal that the Lord Jesus Christ has cooked up for us today. And all I'm trying to do, I don't need to, you know, ooh and ah you with a two-hour message about this specific, specific um, revelation. Once you catch it, you're going to be like, man of God, I'm good. I'm full. Thank you. I get it. I'm going to watch out for it. Click. Hey, no hard feelings. Just show some love, you know, send a little, you know, little scripture in the comment section or some little high five, a like to help the algorithm. You know, we don't get YouTube checks. We just want the video to go to more people. That's all. You know what I'm saying? We're not partnered up with YouTube. Never have been. Um, but this right here, this pattern. Look at it like chess. You have checkers, which is a fast paced game. But it's usually, you you can premeditate one or two moves, but chess can, so if a, a really good chess player can premeditate five moves in advance. And you're up against a cherub angel in his whole kingdom. So he's not just at war with you today. In his mind, check what I'm about to say. You're going to see how real it is. In Satan's mind, He's not only at war with you today, but he's at war with you for a whole six months. He's planning out his attacks. He, you, you, you're up against him. You wake up like, all right, I'm ready to face the devil today and fight him in Jesus' name. And the devil's like, you deal with a day-to-day -day basis, but I'm lining up six months of attacks against you. You see the difference? So you got to get in Christ and stay there so you are ahead of his plans. You see that? Don't fall victim to all the snares that he's trying to lay out before you. And what you'll notice about the enemy, because he hates God so much, he tries to copy the Most High God. And the Lord God Almighty operates in patterns. So Satan also operates in patterns. What he'll do is repeat himself, but a lot of times people don't notice that. You ever notice in your marriage, you'll have a season where everything is great. Then all of a sudden, it's so crazy, you'll just fight over everything, right? Keep it real. Come on, brother and sister, okay? Don't polish up your marriage, you know, and make it look like I'm not talking to you. Like, you know what I'm saying is real. You know what I mean? You went through a season, you were worshiping together, you were in the presence of God, everything was beautiful. Then all of a sudden, you woke up, and you both were aggravated with each other for the next three weeks. <laughs> and you're like, what is going on? Why am I so annoyed with my husband? Why does my wife aggravate me? Why are we bickering and arguing over stupid little things? The patterns came back. You see, demons operate in seasons. They'll leave. And then come back around in a month or two. 
they do this strategy. They're not stupid. This see, this is what you got to realize. Too many of these YouTube preachers, they got you putting your guard down. You thinking everything is sweet like cupcakes. No, you're up against a highly intelligent kingdom of darkness. The good news is we represent and we serve the kingdom of light, the kingdom of Christ. So, of course, we got the greater. We got the almighty. But even Paul said we are what? Not ignorant of the devil's devices, of his tricks. So don't think it's sweet. You got to stay vigilant because you're, ah, oh, wow, what a word. Your adversary, the devil, roams around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see it now. So watch the tactic. I'm just going to do a little bit now. Try not to get this message to be over an hour because the second part to this video is much heavier. I'm going to need more time from you and I appreciate you sacrificing to roll with me and hang out at the dinner table as I serve you the meal. Amen. So think about it this way. But nature doesn't even nature teach you that everything has patterns. I mean that from the English format of repeated uh, by design or repeated steps is a pattern to things, right? Um, in boxing, you'll notice certain boxers, they got a pattern. They'll go one, two, three, four. Uh, you know, one, two. There's a pattern each fighter has that if your coach, now I'm not promoting boxing, I'm just using this as an analogy, but if your coach is wise enough, he's going to study your opponent for three months before you fight him. So that way he's going to tell you, okay, my son, listen, this guy right here, he goes, he always, he got a certain way to his patterns. I figured out his pat. I'm about to do the walk away, y'all. I'm about to do the walk away. I'm about to do the walk away. If y'all don't know what the walk away is, it's when we get so excited we just got to walk away from the dinner table for a moment. Have you ever ate a meal so good? You just get up and do a little dance. You're like, mm, what is this? That's how good Jesus' food is. Amen. That's how good he is. He's the greatest food giver, the king of the kitchen, the chef of all chefs. So if you find out the pattern of your enemy as a boxer, you can be ready for the attacks, you see? But if you ain't study, if you don't know, he can do the pattern and boom, knock the wind right up out of you, hit you in the rib and you look, oh, and it's a wrap after that. And thinking the enemy wants to catch you off guard to knock you in your spiritual ribs to try to get you to release the spirit. To, oh, come on, that's so deep. Thank you, Jesus. So, even nature will teach you birds. Do not birds leave and fly to another place for a season, but they always what? They come back, don't they? What about a bear? Right? We don't got to get all super deep animal planted on you, brothers and sisters. But look at a bear. A bear be hibernating for a certain season. You, if you was Native American... Right. A lot of us, we got mixed, you know, races in us. You know, it's some of y'all are full blooded one thing, but not me. You know what I mean? I got Native American, Scottish, Finnish. You know what I mean? I'm kind of all over the place. But it, here in, in this native land here, if there was seasons where, excuse me, in the seasons where bears were hibernating, a lot of the Native Americans, man, that was a great opportunity because the bears were sleeping. You know what I mean? Like, listen, when you back then, you had to go and hunt to do certain things and you walk through the woods and you mess around and accidentally get close to a mother bear with two of her cubs. And this bear is like 10 feet tall when she stand up and she got a claw that can tear your jaw off. You think you want to be around that bear? Now, if you got faith like King David, if you got faith like King David, can I get a name, man? And we'll might as well integrate that now. You see, the bear and the lion operate in different seasons. Oh, come on. And they fight differently. You notice the bear, David fought from a distance with a rock and a sling. But if you read and study it carefully, I'm not going to read it now just to save time, but you read it. 
Test the spirit. See if what I'm saying is true, is sharp, and accurate. All glory to Christ. But he said the lion, he fought up and close. He grabbed the mane. Is that what they call it? The, the, like the beard of the lion. He, he was up close and personal with the lion. But yet the bear he fought from a distance. That lets you know that not every spiritual war is fought in the same vicinity. Some spiritual warfare is fiery darts being sent at you from a distance. And you got to shoot at the enemy back from a distance with prayer. Um, some wars are up close and personal with the enemy, and you got to fight them face to face, of course, with, with Christ. You can't fight the enemy without him. But, but even bears hibernate. So there's a season when their guard would go down because they're like, oh, the bears are hibernating. But once that season changed, that bear came up out of hibernation, and that bear hungry. You see what I'm saying? So these demons will leave a body. They'll go. And you be thinking, I'm delivered. I'm delivered. You know what I'm saying? You girl, you chilling. You know what I'm saying? You thinking everything is sweet, brother. You know, you ain't even studying the way you should. You ain't reading because you got your deliverance prayer and you felt the power of God and demons came out of you. But you're not remembering the patterns, the seasons, and the tactics. Because them demons, they're going to wander out. Because they're going to get their homies. You know what I'm saying? The demon is going to get his big brother. You know what I'm saying? Not that's not real big brother, but you get what I'm saying. He's going to get his cousins that are much stronger than him because he wants his house back. So even in the season where you feel like it's peace, everything great, your marriage is going well, you know what I'm saying, your joy in the Lord, make sure your prayers are also... I want to say that what's the word I'm looking for, Lord? Futuristic? Can we get a little modern day with it? You got to plan ahead and be like, Lord Jesus, everything is going well right now. But Lord Jesus, please give me strong discernment and prepare me for the patterns of the enemy. When Satan tries to come back around, Lord Jesus, but have me ready and show me the signs. Remember what Jesus says? You say you, see, you can see the leaves change. You can see all of these, but you can't discern the signs of the times, right? Ask God to give you discernment to see the tactics patterns and seasons that Satan has in your life. Did you know that even the months, if you actually took note, like if, if you were able to for the last five years and you wrote a diary on the month of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, you would notice a pattern with each month. You would notice that certain months you seem to be like, Everything seemed to be good, but another month, there seems to be like certain things that'll happen, whether like finances or things fall and crumble down. You end up usually average, you kind of like lose your job around like June, you know what I mean? Not hype, I'm not saying you, but a person loses their job and, and see, they never pay attention to the yearly patterns, so they don't realize the certain principalities and certain demons that are assigned to each month of your life. Oh, come on. I'm about to, I'm about to walk away. So if you knew that, you could prepare with prayer and fasting. You're like, okay, I know every January there's certain things that have a pattern of happening to me and my household almost every January. So here it is, December. I'm preparing for Jan. Come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm. It's December. I'm gonna prepare for January. I'm, I'm getting ready because I know there's certain principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, and demonic entities that are assigned certain months to come against me. They go away. There's certain principalities, certain powers. They only mess with you w one month out of the year. But there's other principalities. They all take turns. They're all trying to see who can conquer you. They hate you, sister. Brother, they hate the fact you're a manifested son of God now. So they all, you know, there could be a principality of lust, right? But what if I told you that it's not just the months of the year, but also the days of the week? 
You seeing it? Some of y'all like, oh, I get it now. Give the glory to Christ. I'm just the waiter. I'm giving you the meal. He the, he the chef. Glorify the Holy Spirit. Glorify the Holy Spirit real quick with me, will you? Holy Spirit, we glorify you and thank you for this message in Jesus' mighty name. So not only the months have certain demons and principalities that are assigned specific months, but also specific days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, and another thing is, why do you think they name the months and the days pagan names? Because that gives them government. Ah, <laughs> that gives them government uh, governance. Is that the word? They're able to govern over it because of the pagan roots. Now, obviously, you know, if you try to get super spiritual with people, they have no clue what you're saying. I tried it. My wife tried You know what I mean? Like, hey, bro, I'm going to meet you on the fourth day of the week. People be like, uh, what do you mean the fourth day? Like, it's hard to communicate in this Babylonian system when you try to get out of it. You know what I mean? That's why the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. You feel me? But the point is, don't lose focus. If you look at your pattern, start with the week. And some of y'all can come back, come back a month from now and leave a comment in the section, uh, leave a comment in the comment section and, and tell me what you've discerned in your patterns, right? Because the week is easier to, to know the patterns of months that that takes a year long process. And then the following year and the following year, that's something you gain wisdom with and we running out of time. But the, the at least the days of the week, you'll be able to see quicker, Right. And you'll notice on average, there's a certain day where you feel drained. There's a certain day where you just don't feel like doing nothing. That's, that's the demon assigned that Wednesday or whatever day it is where that one demon or it's a power or a principality is sent by the sa uh, satanic kingdom to stumble you and cause you to be lazy, not to read, not to want to pray. You just don't feel like doing nothing. That is the pattern, right? And you might notice that on Friday, you get this urge to, you know, get lusty. You're, maybe you're not married or something. You just, you know what I mean? You fighting like a seducing spirit in the bed at two in the morning. You feel, you know, they. what do they call it? Come on, we are, you know, we, we being real here, right? In the world, they say it's called what? Horny? Imagine that the word horn is in the word horny. Like horns, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. But you notice that there's certain days where, you know, you get attacked. But these are patterns. So you got to break the pattern. It'll mess up the whole kingdom of Satan. They'll have to re-strategize. And they fumbling around trying to figure out what they're going to do. But they don't want you to know about these patterns. They don't, want, they don't want you to know how they'll come around and come back around to try to catch you off guard. Right? If you notice that even in relationships and people, you notice the pattern, how God will show you someone in your life don't belong in your life, whether they're sociopathic or they're just wicked or they're energy vampires. And it's not that you condemn people, but Jesus clearly said, if your right hand offends, you cut it off. If your eye offends, you pluck it out. There's certain people that are hindering your life, you got to let them know, like, look, I love you. I'm not condemning you. I'll be here for you if you need prayer, if you ever want to talk about the Lord. But me and you, we got to hurt, right? So you notice that when one negative person will get uprooted and, and finally you'll get them out of your life, what happens just like clockwork? A couple weeks go by, Satan will bring a brand new person into your life with the same character and spirit. Did you notice that? Some of y'all can't even sit down because you you fired up right now. Because this revelation, just like it blessed me, I know it's blessing you. This is such a powerful nugget. Because once you can figure out, because every single one of y'all got different strategies working against you. Some of you that are married, like I was saying earlier. There's certain times of the week or the month uh, or the year, whatever. You know, everything is going well. But then there's other times of the week or the month or the year where it just seems like you can't get along. You don't understand each other. There's confusion and error in your language. You, you misunderstand each other. You get offended and, you, you know, little 
little quarrels turn into bigger things, right? Hopefully not too big, because if you're born again, if y'all are in the Lord, you shouldn't go to the extreme. Although it, it can happen, you got to repent, and God forbid. But what I'm saying is, have you ever considered these are patterns? And see, while they were happening, you never thought in your mind, let me make a note on what day of the week it is. Let me make a note on what time of the month it is, what week of the month it is. Let me make a note on what month it is. Let me make a note on what location this is happening. See, it ain't just times, it's also places, you see? Certain places will bring certain... Certain places will do certain things. You got you to gotta figure this out. There's certain patterns. Some of y'all, man, you like Moses part two at home, sister. You know what I mean? You in the spirit. You just loving it. You living godly. But when you get to work, once you clock in, there's almost like this like loose, relaxed, little bit of a worldly spirit that kind of try to massage you. Keep it real, brother, sister. Come on. Well, you're not that same type of person that you are at the house. You know why? Strategies, patterns, and seasons, and places. See, we just added the fourth element. The fourth aspect of this is places. Because certain places have certain portals opened up. And if certain places are governed by the kingdom of Satan, and other places are governed by the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be a completely different atmosphere for you to be around. And see, where you're getting the confusion, wow, this word is so awesome, Lord Jesus, wow. Where you're getting the confusion is, you're at home, your guard is down, because you're in the atmosphere of your real kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, that's where you belong, so you're loving it, you're in the joy of the Lord, and your guard is down because you're in the presence of God and his kingdom. But what you're not doing right, a lot of y'all, is the next morning you wake up, you're headed to work. Even in your car, you're, you know what I mean? You're praising, you're singing that song. You're probably crying on the highway. You know, some of y'all get touched doing 70 or 65, depending on what state you're from. Don't be, don't be breaking that speed limit now, brother. But... You notice, though, what you forgot is you're entering into your job site that has a satanic atmosphere. And you go in there. It's not that you're, you're supposed to bring your atmosphere there and fight that. But in your mind, your guard is down because you're so used to being in the presence of God and in the presence of, his, presence of his kingdom that you go into the kingdom of Satan's atmosphere at work with your guard down. You see? You're not supposed to do that. You have to learn how to switch gears. You got to learn. It's no different than, and ladies, y'all are very good at this. Come on, keep it real. You know what I mean? You're good at knowing seasons, especially if you're a mother or an auntie. You know what I'm saying? But let's just talk moms, right? Like, y'all will buy winter clothes that are on sale while summer is going on. Now, us men, we'll be like, girl, what you doing? Man, why are you wasting money? Like, it ain't the winter time. Like, buy shorts. But the y'all women know, look, this winter clothes is half off. It's going to be twice as expensive during the cold season. I'm preparing now for the different type of weather. So if you have that knowledge, sister, or brother, if you have that knowledge, if you look outside and it's raining, you know. Let me get my umbrella. Let me get my rain jacket. You know, women normally will be the ones to put on a rain jacket. Because, man, we got this tough guy complex. You know what I'm saying? We can't be looking like no punk now. <laughs> I'm just playing, but I'm not. You, you know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. But you know to grab your umbrella. If it's a hot, humid day, what? Have you ever seen that one person that wore the wrong outfit to work? It's hot. And they got the long sleeve, thick black shirt on, and they fronting like they not hot, but you see the beads of sweat, they just going like this, <laughs> right? They didn't discern the weather properly. So if in the natural realm, you have to prepare contingent upon and according to your atmosphere, the temperature, you know what I'm saying, all of that, it's no different in the spirit realm, brother, sister. You have to prepare yourself accordingly. 
If you know your job site got nothing but witches, warlocks, and worldly people and fornicators, you can't be going there like, hey, everybody. Hey, girl. Hey, what's up, dog? You know what I mean? No, you got to be on guard. You got to put your, your rain jacket on because it rains sin up in there. You see what I'm saying? You got to dress accordingly in the spirit realm. You got to put on Christ and get ready. You know what I'm saying? You're not there to blend in. You see what I'm saying to you? You're not there to merge. You're there to stand apart. You're a peculiar people. A royal pre- I'm about to do another walk away because this is so exciting. I, I got to finish up soon because the second part is where it gets deep. And what hopefully, if we have time, I'll recap this on the second part of this message. But start to figure out the patterns. Mark them. Write them down in your notebook. On average, do it for a full two months. What is Monday like? What is Tuesday like? Wednesday like? Thursday like? Friday like? Saturday, Sunday, right? You'll notice a a common commonality. You'll notice an average. But there's more than that. You'll notice in places, right? Um, Learn, too, not to be so predictive. You go to the same supermarket. You go to the same gas station. You go same here. What you're doing is it's not out of being paranoid or worried. You got to switch up, y'all. See, a lot of believers, they lack logic. They get spiritual, but they get dumb at the same time. Some of y'all know what I'm saying. Some of y'all feel me. I know some of y'all are the fist bump just real quick. Boom. Some of y'all agree. Where Christians will get spiritual, but they, they kind of lack intelligence. So there's a give and take. What you want to be is spiritual and wise in Christ. You want to have both. You see what I'm saying? So you'll notice that, you know, if you switch up sometimes, have a couple different spots you go. Don't be so expected. You go to the same Dunkin' Donuts every morning. They know your name. They know what you like. They know what you want. Yeah, but you also, you're giving away your entire route to the enemy. Oh, this is this can go so deep, y'all. So break the demonic patterns. Break the satanic seasons. You are like a spiritual harp machine against Satan. He can try to conjure up weather, but you can break that weather. You see how the Illuminati, the Luciferians, they've been creating technology to control weather because they're trying to play God. You understand? But they can't at they can't beat God at his position. God is he's got his time. He's gonna destroy the Antichrist, the false prophet, he's gonna annihilate the entire beast system. But until he return in his fullness, we gotta stand here firm and represent Christ as the tabernacle that carries Christ on the inside. You see what I'm saying? So what I want to do is help you through Christ because of experience and knowing these things so you don't have to fall into pits that you ain't meant to fall into. You ain't got to oh, go through so much seasons of fighting with your husband or wife because don't forget, when you guys fight as husband and wife, the Bible says your prayers are hindered. The devil ain't trying to just get you out of fight. He don't want your prayers to prosper. So get along. Listen, I know some of y'all like, thank you for saying that, man of God. Yes, get along with your husband. Get along with your wife. Now, some of y'all are married to unbelievers or worldly. Hey, you chose that. Don't be complaining. Pray and fast. Win them over by your good conversation. But if you both believe, put down the pride, bitterness, unforgiveness. Stop bringing up the past. Move forward together. And try to perfect your walk together. Don't let Satan hinder your prayers, y'all. That's the worst. One of the worst things in a marriage. I'm telling you, get out of that season. Y'all enjoying this message? I really love this message. It can go so much deeper, y'all. I'm being, I'm just kind of like brushing the surface. You know what I mean? There's there's seasons to everything. Even if you notice when Jesus fasted, read it on your own time, right? It says that once the devil realized he couldn't get Jesus, it says, and the devil departed for a season. That means he left, but he was what? I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back, but I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave you alone. 
But I'm going I'm to come back with a different what? A different strategy. You notice there were certain times the devil was trying to get into people and cause people to want to kill Christ. But what did Christ say? It ain't my hour yet. You see, the devil kept trying to come back with different strategies and tactics. One time he'll come to try to attack Jesus in his mind when he was fasting. Another time he tried to stir up the crowd against him. That didn't work. He come back and stir up the, you know what I'm saying? He's trying different tactics. Same thing the devil did with Paul and the other apostles, men and women of God. What did Paul say about how many times he was betrayed by countrymen? He was betrayed by brothers. He was robbed. He was being, he went through shipwreck. Remember? Remember the Eurachlodon, the hurricane? These are different strategies and different patterns and different seasons. You just didn't know it, but Paul knew. That's why he was warning you about certain be instant, in season, out of season. Know the seasons. Not just the seasons of the Almighty. That's more important, of course. But you got to pay attention to the satanic forecast. Oh, that's it right there. The satanic forecast. What has he got planned? You see how the weather... I'm about to do the walk away. You about to do it with me, but let's just... Let me talk first and we going... We going... When you watch a weather reporter... Now, we know sometimes they wrong, but let's just hypothetically say... The weatherman on Monday... Like, all right, it's going to be the weather forecast for the week. We got Monday clear skies. We got Tuesday clear skies. But Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, always a weekend be getting rain. Yeah, you ever notice that? You're trying to have a good time with the fam or get together with the bride of Christ and do something together as a community and raining and thundering. That's what y'all need to learn how to pray deeper and ask God to switch up the weather but my point is that weatherman will tell you to forecast don't you know that if you go to christ he'll warn you what the, the satanic forecast is ahead of time he'll let you know my child sister brother you better hear this sister brother jesus if you communicate with jesus he will expose satan's weather forecast he'll say my he'll be like my child get ready monday Devil's going to try to sow discord in your house. He's going to try to get you angry, easily irritable. You, uh, you're going to get people uh, getting you mad on the highway. Prepare, my child. Why don't you do this fast Monday so you can overcome Monday? He might tell you, brother, my son, Wednesday, get ready. It's going to be spiritual storming out. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna you're gonna go through it. Someone's gonna hurt your feelings. You're about to be betrayed. It's a it's a season. You see what I'm saying? We ain't going to do the walk away just to save time, but it's a season. You got to, you got to know this. There's a tactic. I don't know if any of y'all have ever seen the message called the tail of Satan. Tail like T-A-I-L, like a snake tail, like a dragon tail. One of my favorite messages that Christ has ever given me to serve you. Please watch that. The tale of Satan. But I want you to go to Amos chapter 5. We're going to be wrapping up actually. Amos chapter 5. Watch this. Amos chapter 5. Okay. Now. This is Amos 5. I want you to see verse. 19. It says. As if a man did flee from a lion. And a bear met him. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. We know that this is implying the return of the Most High God, the day of the Lord. But I wanted to also bring in the fact that Satan will sometimes make you think he's retreating only to come back and wait for you to put your guard down and strike a and strike again you have to know this that's why the word of god says be ready be sober be vigilant because your adversary roams around you know the scripture so you will think oh i got away from the lion and you got home it was like ah, you put your hand on the wall like ah, and, the, and the devil got a serpent there you see what i'm saying so no one of his tactics is the old switch where he looked like he retreating, but he's coming back around to try to catch you off guard. You ever heard of the Trojan horse? When they looked like they were retreating, they brought the gift to the gate and they had the men inside of the horse and they looked like they were sailing away. But at late night, when all the people were drunk from celebrating because they thought their enemy retreated, the men came out of the horse 
killed the guards, opened up the gates, and they rushed in, and you already know it was a wrap. You don't want satanic Trojan horses because you celebrate victories too quick. Some of y'all celebrate victories way too quick. You ever see that YouTube video of the football player? You know what I mean? Mr. GQ Smooth, right? He ran down, man. He dipping and diving. And, oh, he had the, he had the 15 yards before the touchdown. And he start doing his dance like, uh. And what happens? He don't realize that young brother who's trying to make a name for himself, he bang and knocks the ball out of his hand and fumbles. They get it and they get the touchdown. Why? He celebrated too early. Know the seasons. Know the tactics. Oh, this is so good. You remember when David went to war and as he won one victory, Satan came through the back end and grabbed up all the women and children when they came back using another nation's army. To the point where the men wanted to kill David. That's how hurt and angry they were. I'm going too deep, y'all. I'm going to keep it real. Like, I think you get it. As much as I want to continue with this, a good word too is repetition. Try to analyze the strategy, repetition, tactic, season, and pattern. Those are the five key words that I want you to really meditate on and try to figure out if you can tap in and expose the satanic seasons that have been operating very well against you for a long time. Because if you don't understand the seasons, how do you overcome them? You see what I'm saying? Like even common with, you know what they say, common sense, right? We say logic. I'll go back to the clothing. Even way back, we're talking like Native American days here in America. They had to learn or they would not survive. They had to learn. You talking Native Americans back up in, you know, Chicopee, Mass and certain places. Where do you think that name came from, right? Certain Native American names and stuff, right? You know how cold it gets in Massachusetts? You know how cold it gets up north? But you know how beautiful it is in the summertime, right? I mean, summertime, it'd be beautiful in Massachusetts. But what do you think happened when nature started to change on them? They paid attention to the seasons. They're, okay, we got we to gotta go get some bear skins. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we better hunt some animals and, and be able to cover our children and, and, you know, bulk up the teepees or whatever they was building back then. You know what I'm saying? You get the point. But they had to discern the change of season. Why is it in the spirit realm you have not been discerning the satanic forecast? You keep, you keep becoming a victim. You know what I mean? You're not prepared when it rains. You got no umbrella. When it's cold, you got no sweater. When it's hot, you got no shorts and a tee. You, you're all over the place. You got to stop in Jesus' name. Get that cleaned up. Start paying attention. Write a note. Even, oh, this is so deep. Even demons that'll attack you in your bed, you'll notice they come in patterns, right? And they like to work as a team. You know Derek Prince, Demon Gangs. If you haven't seen that message, look up Derek Prince, not Joseph Prince with the skin tight Michael Jackson pants on. I'm talking Derek Prince. He got a message called Demon Gangs. Excellent. Excellent message, but they even work together. You'll have the old hag spirit. This unclean demon loves to creep in the late, late, late night. It's a sudden spirit of fear. Have you ever been chilling, brother, sister, and you're normally not afraid? And there'll be one night where you feel afraid walking through your house at night when the lights is... You're like, why do I feel this fear? Old hag probably came around. It's her season. Oh, this is such a good word. Yeah, when I say this, I'm not like boasting. Like, I already told you he the one to cook it. If you really want to know what it is, is I'm so impressed with Jesus Christ that even when I'm teaching you through him, I'm just as excited as you. I hope you know that. If you don't know my character by now, then something wrong with your discernment. If you've been eating off this dinner table for a while, you know, that's that's the curse that falls on Pharisees and religious people. 
They hate free people. People that are free in Christ. They get angry and jealous. The Pharisees were jealous of Christ. So if you truly love the Lord and you love us and you're in this ministry, you should know I'm just excited along with you. But if you look at it, right? And we're going we gonna to wrap it up soon, okay? We're going to do the prayer. But if you look at even the strategies and the tactics, right? Where you'll feel a spirit of fear, that's that old hag spirit or a spirit of nightmare that said, hey, it's my turn to come back around. I want you to imagine that if you could see a hallway with 30 doors and each door has a name on the, on the door, right? When door says old hag. Another says wet dream, succubus, incubus. Another says, you know what I mean, this, or whatever the case be. Satan will have his clipboard. I'm just trying to say it in a way you'll understand. You say, okay, um, I see that the pattern shows that incubus and succubus, and he'll tell the principality, okay, go tell incubus and succubus to come out and go attack her. It's that time. She's usually getting on fire. She's about to do her fast. And it looks like, according to our records, about this type time of the season, we usually send a succubus spirit to attack her in the bed. And two days later, usually she's masturbating. I know that hits some of y'all ladies because you know it's real. Same thing with you brothers. Okay, Satan will be like, okay, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, usually about this time of the season, he starts really trying harder. He starts really reading more and praying more. Uh, let's see here. It's the 22nd. It's a Friday. Yep. Uh, listen, uh, principality so-and-so, go tell Succubus to go visit so-and-so, which, you know, he'd be talking about you in the past, to go attack you in your sleep. Make you have a wet dream. You wake up ashamed. That spirit of lust, now you got to try to fight it off of you. And you didn't even know it was a pattern. And you can be ahead of it by being in prayer and saying, Lord Jesus, disrupt the patterns of the devil. Strike at his weather forecast, Lord God. Expose his patterns. Expose his rituals, his re repetitious attacks, his tactics. Let it be known, O oh God. May I be seven steps ahead of my enemies. So that way, instead of you being caught off guard when the succubus spirit comes around, sister, that lust demon, right? That demon will come around thinking he about to get you, but you're waiting for him. You see, you caught on. Well, you want to walk? Let's just walk. Let's just walk away. Wow. Wow. Wow, sister, brother, wow. So, brother, you waiting. Now you caught on to the pattern. You know. Okay, I know it. Whenever I start getting closer to the Lord, I start getting into my Bible and praying. Without fail, that demon tries to attack me in the midnight hour to get me all lust. It, almost, it, it literally feel like a blanket, don't it? Almost like a blanket that you, you can barely push it off of you. It's just lust. You're just like, what is this? Right? But now you're ready for the pattern. You're ready for the, the, the tactic. You're ready for that weather forecast. Now you already declared a fast. You knew that demon was about to come around any night now. And show sure enough, you can feel that demon come into the room. And you're like, I bind you, you unclean spirit. Go back and I break your pattern right now. Lose this address in Jesus Christ's name. The Lord is here. The angels of the Most High are here. You are illegally trespassing. I reject you in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, bind it up. Bind it up and disrupt the forecast. I bet I could guarantee, I could tell you right now, that succubus, that incubus, that spirit of fear, nightmares, whatever it is, you'll disrupt it. You'll mess them all up. They won't know what to do. They'll have to go and huddle and try to figure out a new strategy. And you just stay on top of it by staying in Christ, staying in your word, staying in communication with the Most High God. He will warn you of your enemy's plans. Did he not get Saul ahead? Oh, every time I say I'm about to end this word, I just keep going. Because that's how the Holy Ghost, he's just so good, right? You remember how Jesus would warn Paul? 
he would send like a vision of a man. Paul, Paul, come to this place. Come to Macedonia. Come to this place. God was making Paul ahead of his enemy. When when every time they try to kill Paul, God would let him know ahead of time. You see it now. Because Paul was in the will of the Father. And when you're serving Christ and you're obeying God's Son, He will keep you ahead of your enemy. What a word. Wait till y'all wait for the second part of this video. Um, this right here, life changer. Uh, any minor things that I could talk about before we pray? Because there's so many aspects to this. The same thing again, y'all. Learn the patterns of when you usually get attacked in your marriage. When you're usually fighting each other, what time of the month it is, what type of season it is, you know what I'm saying? Um, ladies, I'm just being real, depending on the woman though, I'm just keeping it a hundred with you. Some of you women didn't really get too emotional when you were pregnant. Some of you don't go through mood swings when you have your period. I mean, ladies, y'all know the cramping is real and all of that. I'm just talking real. But if you are not too deep in the spirit, the devil will try to use even that time of the month when your period come around because he knows you're already irritable so he'll whisper try to whisper in your ear like look at your husband do the clown <laughs> and you be looking at your husband like you don't even know the pain i'm in and you want to kiss me on my neck what's wrong with you you know what i'm saying like it's real y'all but know the patterns so you can protect yourself in your marriage where you you're ready for it you you kind of look at each other in bed and be like baby we have not fought in a while. We've been doing so well. I could feel in the spirit the enemy is going to try to launch an attack. I could feel in the spirit that the enemy is going to try to get us to have a fight. I could feel it. You, you will look at each other and be like, baby, we've been going well for now for a good solid month. We've been getting along. We've been reading. But I could feel the weather forecast. The enemy is going to try to send a principality or a power or some messenger of Satan to try to cause us to bump heads. And if you communicate with each other, you can go back to back. Like her back is to yours and you got Christ in you and you ready for it. You ready for it. And the minute, sister, you feel your energy start to change towards your husband or brother, the minute you start to feel your energy change towards your wife, you'll know that season, that weather has come in where the enemy is expecting y'all to fight and hinder your prayers and all them seeds and all the blessings you've been working hard to is falling out. Not this time. You're going to be ready for the fight. Isn't that amazing? So you have to pay attention to the patterns of the devil and you'll know his weather forecast ahead of time. He's even using in patterns. Look at how the infection rate goes up and down, how it, it, it fluctuates depending on what state they need to dominate and do something in. You'll notice a quote unquote increase in numbers. It's all a weather forecast, a strategy. You notice that they released everyone from a quarter team and now they're coming back with their quote unquote second wave trying to quote everybody again it's to catch everybody off guard they wanted people to get a taste of freedom so they can lock them back up in their house so that way people will get programmed to beg for freedom to the point they'll be willing to take the abomination god forbid in the mark of the beast it's all patterns and weather forecasts and strategies and tactics but if you're in christ and you take heed to this message you will be ahead of their tricks you'll see it ahead of time remember the bible says the wise man foresees a matter and avoids it but the fool goes in and gets punished do you foresee the plans of the enemy by going to jesus christ to warn you some of y'all were in terrible relationships with sociopaths who had no empathy or narcissists uh, abusive people men that would beat you sister and like patterns he would say sorry everything would go back to normal your guard would go down and then that demon would rise back up in him and abuse you again these you were victim 
of the satanic patterns that you, when the season changed you put your guard down you thought everything was cool and before you knew it you were getting struck again pay attention to the patterns So anyways, I could go on for literally two, three hours with this because it's just so rich. It's so nutritious. What a word that the Lord has given us tonight, today, whatever time it is for you. But let's go ahead. I, I know what's going to happen, y'all. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm just going to start bubbling more revelation about this. And I'm probably going to have to add it to the second half. But be ready to shift gears, Lord willing, with the second half of this video. Because the second half got to do with the heavenly realm. And what goes on pattern-wise when it comes to the biblical definition of pattern. So we ain't going to get into that right now. But um, again, we love y'all so much. Um, you know, for all our partners, we appreciate your prayers, your support, and above everything, staying in the fight with us. Other than that, if you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, please repent now and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and to come into your heart. Amen. So we're going to pray now. All right. And I want to just do a basically a, a underlining prayer to help guide you on how you could pray, what you can say to the Lord, to ask for wisdom. To pay attention and discern the seasons and patterns and the strategies that the enemy has been repetitiously using against you. But because you never noticed it as a pattern, you never noticed that it came in the same cycles most times. You didn't pay attention to that. You just went about your every day, week, and month, and year not realizing, wait a minute. These evil beings take turns against me. They try to, you know, the certain one demon is in the month of January, another principality in February. This demon loves to attack me on Monday, and this other demon likes to attack me on Tuesday, and these demons like to tag team me on Wednesday. Like, it's real like that, you feel me? But the good news is, is you got Jesus Christ, if you're saved. You have his amazing angels. You have way more on your side than the enemy does. And the kingdom that you're with is far greater than that kingdom. But it doesn't mean everything is sweet. You have to be aware of people, places, times, and things. You got to know your atmosphere. You got to know how to shift gears. You was in the presence of the Lord with your guard, your guard down at home. In your car on the way to work. But sister, brother, when you get to that job site, you got to switch gears. You got to be more alert. It ain't sweet. Some of y'all, you get invited to a ch Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Before we pray, this is going to be the last one, I believe. Some of y'all, you get invited to a, a Christian church. You don't know nobody like that. You just get invited by like one person. You don't know the doctrine. You go in there and you automatically have your guard down because it's a quote-unquote church. Very, very dumb move. I'm not saying go up in there annoyed and paranoid and you think everybody witches. Nah, don't do that. Don't be a Pharisee. But just discern the atmosphere there, the weather pattern there. Because if you put your guard down, Sometimes, and I'm, I'm telling you right now, sometimes church buildings be more dangerous than the block with a, with a worldly people are at. Because when you're on the block, sister, brother, as a believer of the Most High, as a saint of God, you got your guard up because you're like, yeah, uh-uh, y'all ain't, no, I'm going to stay in the spirit here. You got witches around here and this and that. But how come when you go to certain church buildings, you think everything's sweet? 
You got your eyes closed just <laughs> just cuz the chorus is nice, just cuz they got a good choir, you're just like take me as I am. And a false prophet come and put his hand on you while you worshiping and you going to let him cuz you in the zone. Nah, I'll be like this. I'll be like, take me as as soon as he's done. I'll be like, yo, bro, take your hands off me. I don't know you, bro. You're out of line. The Bible says, don't lay hands suddenly on no man. You don't just go. You got to be led of the spirit. And you, you got to know if that person is truly of the Lord. Because you, you can get invited to a ministry God didn't want you to go visit. And sometimes he'll send you to a ministry and you got a whole armor on. You got to armor up. Right? You got to armor up and get ready for battle. It ain't sweet. Not every ministry is a friend of God. You know how many ministries are the enemies of Christ? They don't know it because they're religious. But they're going against the gospel and don't even know it. Just like they, it says if the princes of this world knew who it was they were killing, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. There's a lot of Christian ministries that are persecuting Christ and his people and they think they're not. So even in church buildings, watch out for the weather patterns, just like on a job. You see what I'm saying? And that's why it's so sweet when you're around the true saints of God, where you can actually really be relaxed and just be in the joy of the Lord. You ain't got to be like, get away. You know what I'm saying? Because you're around people that you know love the Lord. That's a beautiful moment to be in. So know who your inner circle is. Who do you keep around you? Are they people that truly love the Lord? It's better you only have three people that are faithful to Christ, that really connect with you, that are really, that are really in your life, rather than 25 people, but you don't really know where they're at. They don't really love the Lord. They end up bringing Trojan horses into your life. All type of stuff. Let me just chill. Because I'm going to end up going on. And, and let's just pray. Let's say this together. Say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Forgive me of my sins. Known and unknown. Wash me in your holy blood. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. Lord Jesus, I forgive all my enemies. And I renounce all of the occult, all false religions and their doctrines, all of sorcery and all of the kingdom of Satan. I command you to get away from me in Jesus Christ's name and go under the feet of Jesus Christ. Lord, teach me not only your seasons, but expose the seasons of the devil Expose the weather forecast of Satan. Show me the patterns that he don't want me to know about. Show me what principalities and powers and what demons are assigned what days, months, and seasons, and people, and places, and things. Give me great wisdom in this area. As you said in James, I can ask if I feel like I'm lacking in wisdom. I'm asking you in the faith of Christ, Father, to increase my wisdom. To be seven steps ahead of the enemy and his kingdom. I love you, Lord Jesus. Disrupt and break the satanic patterns that have been coming against me, my life, my marriage, my walk, whatever it is. Break the strategies, the repetitious attacks that try to get me off guard. Keep me in wisdom. Keep me prepared, vigilant, because I know my enemy, Lord, as a roaring lion seeketh whom he may devour. And Lord Jesus Christ, I know that there is a season for everything. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. Wow. I'm catching revelation as I'm praying. This is amazing. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, even you knew. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm catching revelation. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, 
I repent for not paying attention to the strategies of the enemy. It's time for me to be mature more. It's time for me to go to the next level of godliness. And Lord Jesus, I want to be in your presence and in communion with you, Holy Spirit. In your word, O oh God, that I can hear from you and you can warn me ahead of time about the plans of the enemy. Just like you warned the wise men when Herod tried to deceitfully charm them to get intel on you, O oh God, when you were born on the earth. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I receive your mercy and grace and your wisdom right now. I will do my due diligence, Lord God, with your help to figure out the strategies, the patterns, and the warfare that has been launched against me and my household. And Lord, through prayer and fasting, break it, disrupt it, and send confusion to the enemy's camp. And civil war to Satan's camp. I receive my blessing right now in Jesus Christ's name. I declare the season of God upon my life. The weather patterns of Christ upon my life. And the warfare strategies of Christ. And the armor of God upon my life. In Jesus Christ's name. And I break up and disrupt the weather patterns of Satan. Against me and all that's with me. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amazing, y'all. I was catching revelation. I didn't mean to interrupt the prayer, but I got hit. See, one thing that's amazing is when I obey Christ and I serve you, when I serve you as a waiter, when I, when I serve you the meal of Christ, he rewards me, you see? He gives me, like, Revelation, even when I'm preaching, some of y'all don't know this, but I could be preaching to you and God will be speaking to me in the back of my spiritual mind while I'm talking to you, I'm hearing from him. And there's some things he's like, no, don't tell them this, write this down or don't forget this or tell them that or he'll add to what I'm saying. He's so amazing. But there were some things that he told me that, uh, yeah, it's real. That's all I can say. So, love y'all so much, okay? Be encouraged that although all of this crazy stuff is happening, and yes, the mark of the beast is, um, they're preparing these psychopaths, and all of them at the top, they're getting ready. Although all of this crazy stuff is happening, and yes, the mark of the beast is, um, they're preparing these psychopaths, and all of them at the top, they're getting ready, okay, but Christ is preparing, don't, don't just focus on them, yes, we gotta know about this, we're gonna keep coming out with exposed videos, but focus more on Christ, because Christ is also preparing, you don't think God Almighty knows what these devil worshippers are planning, you don't think he knows? He's ahead of the enemy's plans. He's Alpha and Omega, the beginning of the and the end. Amen. Wow. So don't be discouraged. Don't be overwhelmed and do not fear. Get closer to Christ. Read more. Pray more. Fast more often. Enjoy and appreciate fellowship. Okay? And there's really no excuse. You could be in a third world country struggling financially we welcome you in this ministry all we ask is that you're sincere that you love the lord okay that's that's the main thing that we're looking for okay so amen with that being said i love you appreciate you hanging out at the kitchen at the dinner table appreciate you hanging out at the dinner table and enjoying this meal with me be on the lookout for this but we got some other videos coming as well and remember if you reached out and you haven't got a response to become a partner don't be offended okay there's a lot going on we love you and by the grace of god we'll get back to you all right be watching out for them patterns now amen bless we are